Hey, Hamish, thanks for joining me, friend. No, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a real delight to be here. I knew your face would be orange. <laughs> uh, can you say a little bit about this setup that you've got here? Uh, yeah, okay. So it's, um, uh, I wrote a little, uh, uh, well, I, I got ChatGPT to write me a, a, a little bit of JavaScript, which um, basically, what is this? It's I've, I've, it's a it's a it's a web page where I have drawn a bunch of layers. So there's a layer for the the character, and there's a layer for the eyes, and a layer for the mouth. Um, and I when I when I press spacebar, the mouth opens. When I press shift, the the character blinks, and uh, I can cycle through a few different characters by uh, by uh, pressing the the number keys. So, so just a, a, a little little uh little bit of code to puppeteer some some doodle characters amazing amazing well i love it so much and this is definitely a first for the reach truth podcast so <laughs> thanks for bringing some ingenuity to it Thank uh, you. yeah so i've been excited to have this conversation i feel like i've been pretty inspired by watching your journey with doodling on twitter and the different things that you're up to. And, you know, I have an art practice of my own, so I'm just kind of curious to learn more about your art practice and what doodling is for you and other things that we want to get into. Um, but I, as you know, I'd love to just hear a little bit about you personally and your life story first. I feel like this question of what people have experienced in their life and where they've been and the different things that they've gone through often really informs the topics that we talk about and the way that they approach those things in their life. And I love seeing the connections between, oh, like this happened in my childhood, or then I had this experience and how that plays out in the things that I'm interested in asking people about, about their lives. So yeah, I would love to hear anything that you'd like to share about your life and what's happened to you so far in your life and your life story. Feel free to answer in whatever way you like at whatever length you like. Right. Okay. Um, let me see. So I am I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh um I I don't know. Where do I start? Uh, uh, uh when when I was a kid, I my first ambition was to be a cartoonist. I used to love reading reading web comics. Um and uh uh I'm kind of blanking. <laughs> um, um, can, you, can you maybe maybe uh, prompt, prompt me a bit more? <laughs> what were some of your first experiences with drawing? Um, I used to I, I used to really like sh cartoon shows uh, where there were like lots of wacky characters, like like uh, Lilo and Stitch and Pokemon and stuff. And I used to love just just um the diversity of of all these different personalities that you can bring out with these these like just a handful of lines on a page i used to just love love going through and recreating all of them uh which is, is you know something i uh play around with a lot a lot these days where i just you know draw a triangle or a square and, and see how much personality i can bring out of these really basic geometric elements um what else is also I, i've always also very being very much a um living in my own personal world type where um uh, my mom has the story she likes to tell where when i was when i was a small kid maybe five years old um we were, we were walking along the beach and i suddenly decided that i was the sea feeder and i i would say i'm the sea feeder i i, I don't know you people and I, I would throw seaweed into the ocean to, to feed it um and it apparently took quite a long time to extricate me from this this particular fantasy um that, that that seems like that that kind of captures something about my personality the other that i uh i get very um caught up in uh in my own world uh which yeah um so anyway from there when I, when I was about 
kind of mid mid teens or so i i i, I took us I, I the drawing ambition kind of simmered down and i at that point i decided i wanted to be a scientist instead um and so i went to university and i wanted to learn all the things so i but you know i would have majored in everything if i could but you can't so instead i decided i would only major in the most fundamental things and i did a double degree with uh no a conjoint degree with with double majors on each side of the degree so i majored in uh, physics maths philosophy and computer science um and i wanted to be a physicist but then it turned out that physics is actually very hard uh and computer science has a better roi per unit effort so then i, I wanted to be a uh, a ai researcher guy um so i tried tried doing that for several years i tried tried to being a data scientist and tried to get into phd programs and stuff but sort of broadly didn't get anywhere with that career pursuit um then then what happened oh yeah so then 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 i had a, had a low point in my life where i had spent several years kind of feeling like i wasn't going anywhere with my career and uh i had had a very bad relationship where i um with a very controlling woman um and then it was COVID, and so it felt like everything in my life was falling apart and i got really bad anxiety and kind of felt like i was about to die so then i decided to just quit everything quit everything in my life I'd, I'd, I'd leave my flat i'd break up with my girlfriend and i would um quit my job and then i walked the tiaradoa which is a through hike uh that's three thousand kilometers across the from the sub like uh from the from across the length of new zealand from the the southernmost point to the, to the northernmost point um just like the like the Appalachian Trail, but but New Zealand. Um, so I did that for six months, and that was a radically life changing experience. Uh, somewhere along the way, a thought popped into my head uh, that was what, what uh, the question: What have I done with my life that I'm most proud of? Um, and the answer that that came back was was animations I made when I was like fifteen. I'd, I'd, I'd had a bunch of academic achievements and done a bunch of fancy big boy computer stuff but none of none of that actually felt like it was all that meaningful um uh like yeah um so so then 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 after i finished walking i was like okay so i need i want to do something creative so i i, I spent four or five months just drawing like a maniac and and, and putting stuff up online and I I made a a little educational video that was it was really off the cuff. It was, it was um maybe like half an hour to make, and that was that was maybe my third or fourth video project, and that that somehow went viral and got, got like three million views on Instagram. So then I was like, oh wow, this is this is this content stuff is easy. I can I can uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a, a have millions of subscribers in no time. But then it, it turned out that was just beginner's luck, and, and everything I've done since then has been a, a disappointment. But, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I built up a portfolio, and um, I'd also been been really into uh, effective altruism for a while, and I I, I uh, put it in a grant application saying like, hey, what if I made animations for like explaining effective altruism stuff, and then I somehow I somehow agreed to give me some money for that which was uh a pretty astonishing opportunity after after only a few months of of kind of really going full bore into creative stuff so i did that for a year um it turns out making uh was much much harder than i thought and i really did not do a good job um it's it's very very hard between the, the research the project management the the art the the voice recording um it's it's, it's it was all uh yeah I, I i i not not particularly proud of what i what i achieved over that that year um but 
yeah then also that was uh and that, that's sort of just finished a month or so ago um but yeah I've, over the last year i've i've um traveled around a lot that was a nice thing about this project is that i could i could be anywhere in the world so i spent a bunch of time in in the uk and in lisbon and in uh in the states and i feel like in the last year i've i've, I've really finally met my people i've found my people in in teapot um i've made a like i've got i feel like i've got better friends now than i've ever ever had before in my life um and i i yeah so it's, it's been a really good year for for making friends um that's the key things yeah yeah that's probably probably the key points hmm. can you tell me more about these animations you made when you were a teenager yeah um let me see i had this character called called mr onion um and he was an, an onion with a, a big goofy expression um and it, it just it, it always get up to because he, he, he didn't talk which is was a retrospect is kind of an interesting decision because um with with animations i've tried to make since then the one of the biggest difficulties that i've had is recording my voice and i, I tend to get very self-conscious about my voice um I'm, I'm really not a natural speaker um oh actually another another interesting thing is is that when i was at university uh maybe in my fourth year um I uh I came across Toastmasters, which is this you know public speaking training system, or the, 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 the international organization that that does like public speaking programs. Um, and I, I, I was I was very yeah I've always always been very shy, and this was causing me problems in my life. Um, and I found that. Yeah, doing doing Toastmasters was 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 like I, I got got practice public speaking and it, it 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 was transformative for me because I um got so much more confident and improved my social skills a ton and so that was that was a big turning point um um yeah but but yes so still still I'm, I'm sort of feel like I'm trying to go through a similar thing now where I'm 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 upgrading from uh like the Toastmasters was upgrading from not being able to speak or only being able to speak to one person at a time to being able to speak to uh, a crowd of people at a time. And now I'm trying to figure out how to speak to the whole internet at one time, which is, is a whole different mind game, I find. Um, yeah. But uh, returning from tangent land. So it, this, yeah, Mr. Onion was this, this, this cartoon character i made when I was, I was 15 i made it on scratch which is uh uh it's a it's a it's a tool for learning how to program so i would um i wouldn't i wouldn't do normal keyframe animation type stuff i would i would write programs that would say you know move the character from this coordinate to this other coordinate and uh yeah so it's just, I, I i've always enjoyed programming I like the com I like mixing programming with creative stuff, and uh, I've also always like in, in those in those early early animations. There's also the 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 recognizable kind of sketchy, doodly style with the the lines wiggling around, um, and and the bright colors. Um, yeah, so that yeah, they were these 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 animations were just little um, little. little little sketches with a an inarticulate goofy cartoon character who was always kind of exploding or getting into little scrapes what was it that you were so proud of about these animations that is a big question hmm It's not clear how proud I was. So the, the, yeah, the, the the past tense of that question is uh, sort of stands out to me because it's not obvious. I I was proud of them at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, possibly only in retrospect that I was proud of them. It, it's also 
the word proud also doesn't quite feel right. Like it, 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 it um, yeah. It, 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 it's, I, I guess it's like, it's not an active kind of pride in them. It's more just a, a sort of passive, um, like when I, when I look back on my life, it's, um, it's just, it's something that stands out to me as me being myself and doing the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Hmm. Um, it's less like I went out into the world and I, I imposed my will on it. It's more like, yeah, this was, this was, this was me being my authentic best self and doing, doing the thing that I'm supposed to do. Hmm. Um, yeah. What does that phrase mean to you? Like doing what I was supposed to do. Hmm. I think. So this is partly it's a aesthetic thing where when I, I I've spent a bunch of time thinking about what are the works of art in the world that really stand out to me. And there's really like there's there's some works of art that are just heads and shoulders above of every above everything else. Like like almost everything is 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 just nothing. But then there's there's a few things that just seem to really speak to my soul. Um and so I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to reverse engineer how to like, what is it about these things exactly that, 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 that speaks to me and, and um, how can I, how can I recreate that? Uh, so yeah, there's, there's some, some like some aesthetic judgment, which is very particular. And I think when I when I make stuff that that comports with that aesthetic judgment or or, or um, achieves a high score on that aesthetic judgment, that that contributes to the feeling of of like I'm doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but another another aspect to it is is there's a lot of stuff I I just do naturally, which is kind of strange. But it doesn't like other people don't do that. But it it just um, it just like feels like this is the most natural way for me to do it. Uh, such as um, in when I, when I'm, when I'm having a, a text conversation with someone, it's, it's been a thing I've done for a long time where I, I, I like draw, draw little characters who are uh, sort of emoting the, the reply I want to give. Um, and that uh yeah that that's that's something that that just you know feels feels very natural natural to me but i've never seen anyone else really do that um and so when, when i when i can sort of like make a list of these these things that i i do that are kind of weird but also kind of cool um and I, if i can discern themes from that then i'm like okay this there's, there's something my brain's doing here that's kind of it's, it's like these are clues of like what what is the thing that I'm particularly good at or that I'm I'm just like the machinery of my brain is geared towards doing. Um, and if I if I can get more in line with that stuff, then everything feels a bit more natural. Um, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that that. There's, there's two things, the aesthetic judgment and the uh, gathering up my natural impulses and inclinations and, and, and trying to direct them at something systematic. There's, there's, that's, that's probably what I mean by doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Hmm. Do you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, when you were on this walking tour, you said you sort of started asking this question, like, what in my life? was I most proud of? Do you remember what originated asking that question or how that came about? It, it really came out of nowhere. I was, I was just walking because, you know, I, 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 this, I was walking for six months. So it, all kinds of thoughts passed through my head. Um, 
and I started I started making up songs and doing all kinds of stuff to occupy myself. Um, and but this yeah this 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 particular question it just I was I, I, I vaguely remember just walking for a while with a, a empty head, and then and then this question just just came out of nowhere, and then the answer came out of nowhere. And then I spend a lot of time thinking about what are the consequences of of that. Can you tell me more about this project you made that had a lot of success on Instagram when you made it? Like, what was that, and what what exactly did you make? Um, so it was what what uh, while I had been walking, I was listening to a podcast about linguistics, and there's something something about. It, it it mentioned the um how the old english word for man was wear and the old english word for woman was weef hmm. no is that wait how does it go yeah i think uh, uh, oh yeah yeah so 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 man was originally just person in in old english um it didn't it wasn't gender specific and where was the mas masculine person and weef was feminine person um and oh yeah that's kind of interesting so so werewolf is is werewolf it's it's a uh so it's a specifically male human wolf hybrid so a female so it's so like tracing about the etymology the the, the female version would be a um a weef weef wolf that's that's what a female werewolf should be called um and and, and so that was that was basically the video i was just sort of explaining that that concept that like a female werewolf is actually called a weef wolf and that's kind of a funny funny word to say uh and i drew some some little little cartoons of of male and female werewolves to go along with that um and it was it was just uh i think it was just six drawings that i did on a blackboard and took photos of them and then and then combined them together and recorded about 10 seconds of audio to go with it and then just combined that on uh movie maker or iMovie and uh yeah that was that was all it was, that was that's all it took it was just this one one little observation uh but i think i think because yeah werewolves are like people find werewolves interesting so that that was the the underlying cultural current that that it it was able to um, get swept up on. Hmm. Hmm. And what are some of the things that you've worked on since then? I know you mentioned about like animating EA concepts, um, but you've also been very busy with lots of different doodling projects. And what have some of those been? Hmm. I find it uh hmm, hmm. It's, it's the way the way I experience the project is that they I I I just an idea comes into my head and then I get very excited about it for a while and then and then it passes it passes out when the next project comes in. So I I, I don't have a great bird's eye view of of everything. <laughs> um but uh, one thing I've been working on lately is I've been trying to write a write a book. Um because I've, I've, I've done all these all these little standalone you know single uh i don't know, like it like, single drawings or uh three panel comics or whatever um and a few weeks ago i i sort of thought hey what if i collected like i i i because i've been drawing a lot of comics um when i when i got insomnia i, I so i'd i'd um if I if I couldn't sleep, I just I just sit in the, the corner of my room and and draw draw some comics. So I'd, I've been producing a lot of these, and I thought, hey, what what if I kind of compiled these together and and you know tried to put it in a PDF and and tried to sell that on the internet? Maybe maybe someone would buy that. Um, so I started doing that, and then I thought, hey, I might as well have like a framing story for this thing. Um, and then it's uh i got i I got really i had an idea for a framing story and then i got really excited by that and so then then i i kind of wanted the framing story to take over the the whole compilation of the 
uh, collection of of the standalone comics and and sort of um have them play to get like have the have the the, the sort of canonical story and the collection of standalone skits uh sort of bounce off each other um uh so yeah that, that's that's been really fun i've been obviously i've been trying to trying to write a write a, a a comic book lately um what else um i've been i've been trying to one one project i've had going in the last year is i've, I've been trying to draw ten thousand bad drawings because there's a, a quote by a famous animator Whose name I can't remember. Walter Sheffield or something maybe. Uh, that's that's like you have ten thousand bad drawings and you so you want to get them out as soon as possible. So I, I was just like, I'm going to draw ten thousand bad drawings and get them get all of them out of me. So then I'll only have good drawings left. Um, so uh, I, I'm at almost three thousand, I think now. Um, that's been cool. That's that's like a. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big, big, big goal to set 10,000 of anything. Um, so it'd be cool if I can finish that. Um, I've been trying to make 100 animations to, to, to learn how to do animations. Um, I've, I've, I've got a, got a YouTube channel and I've made, um, it's it, it, so far it's mostly just been sort of throwing stuff at the, just just trying stuff and see seeing what works. So I, I've tried I've tried doing stuff with this this kind of puppeteering of the doodles technology. I've also tried doing stuff with um uh keyframe animation and I've tried like putting visuals to, to music. Um yeah. It's so and I've done maybe somewhere in the vicinity of a hundred hundred videos um but i feel like i still really haven't figured out what what the format is there um i i have this idea of like what 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 if i tried to make like the muppets but it's doodles um and i like have, have this 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 cast of of all these brightly colored crazy characters and, and they all have these these like weird these crazy personalities but but also if they all have like little little shows within one youtube channel like in the, in the same way that you know swedish chef has his, his show and and fozzy bear has his, his comedy show in the muppets um what, what if i like had one character that was like a like a i don't know like a like a mr beast style vlogger and then another, another character that was that was like a um i don't know, like a like a, a political bread tube character and I, I just gave them these sort of like not not quite parodies of the genre, but but sort of homages to the the different genres of of of, of internet videos, um, and but I did them in a, in a in a kind of subversive, cartoony way. That, that seems like that would be cool. Um, and I've, I've sort of been been trying to figure out how to do that for ages. Like I've I've I had this idea. It might have, might have even been back back when I was walking. Um, two years ago but um there's a, a a whole lot of moving pieces to that which are and skills that I, I still haven't really learned like the the writing of it and the the video editing and the the character design um and the, the voice voice work um so that's something I, I'm vaguely aiming at but I don't know if it'll work um but it seems cool um yeah What's your experience of doing 3,000 of your 10,000 bad drawings been like? Like, what have you learned or how have you grown or how have things changed over that time? Hmm. I've, one thing that, I, one big thing that I've learned is that it's, it's fairly easy to be badly prolific. Um, so it's great to make lots of stuff, uh, and you know being being prolific is is, is is great but um like one one thing that i would often do is i I just set a repeating timer for say 20 seconds of drawing and then a five minute break and then 20 more seconds of drawing uh and do that 
you know, 20, 30, 50 times, whatever. Um, and then I can like fairly quickly within 10, 20 minutes, you know, produce um, 50 or 100 drawings. And just by drawing the same one thing over and over, kind of using as few lines as possible. And that's fine. But I don't, I don't, it's unclear how much I actually learn from that. Um, so by, but yeah, by sort of rigorously imposing tight constraints on myself, I can produce a lot of stuff, but none of it is very good. None of it is all that interesting. And it's unclear how much I'm learning from it. Um, so just there, yeah, there is, because there is this story that that one sees floating around that that, that sort of volume is the only thing that matters, um, and you just want to make as many things as possible. Um, and that's that's like maybe as a ideal that that or like on the on on most people's margins, people want to move more towards that ideal. But you if 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 you kind of try to engineer a practice that is entirely uh predicated on that that idea that's actually probably not the best so there is yeah there is some you do need some back and forth between volume and quality um yeah i'm not not, not quite sure how to how to trade those off against each other Have you noticed anything that has changed for you in your drawing over time with that or other projects? Hmm. I feel like I've gotten much better. It 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 um it feels like excavation. Like I I've I've got a innate aesthetic sensibility that I'm I'm trying to manifest um and over time oh yeah actually actually one time i described this as, as like there's a there's a uh it's like a game of darts where where you've the the bullseye is making it's like making art that perfectly captures your aesthetic sensibility um but you don't you're blindfolded so you can't see where the dartboard is um you only know when you've scored points. And so making art is like you're, you're throwing, you start off just throwing darts around the room. And then at some point by chance, you happen to score some points. And that's when you make some art that you're, you're kind of like, and you're kind of proud of. Uh, so then you need to learn two things. First, you need to figure out where the dartboard is, but you also need to learn the skill of throwing darts that actually hit the dartboard. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten a much clearer sense of both what is the, thing I'm aiming at and also how to how to hit it um and the thing I'm aiming at is kind of is this thing this 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 like geometric shapes with smiley faces that kind of wiggle around and, and look kind of goofy but it, it's it's uh with bright colors that and the, the coloring goes outside the lines and that that for whatever reason that is like that <laughs> that just really tickles my my aesthetic sensibility and this, this just feels it feels really right artistically um and and with this i'm i'm, I'm i feel like it's, it's also allowing having figured this out i can i'm starting to be able to communicate more of what's what the inside of my brain actually looks like and what, what all these like millions of uh, you know i have a million million thoughts a second about all kinds of crazy topics um and this yeah I've, I've like i've developed my cultivated my language so that i can actually start to communicate what's what's going on in my brain um which i think at least parts parts of that that answer approximately answer your your question i love this image of like a dartboard and there's like something you're trying to hit and you get better at both hitting that thing and learning how to hit it and like what it is you're trying to hit and how to hit it. And you mentioned what it is you're trying to hit. And I love the description of your art. I'm like, yeah, that's it. And um, 
I wonder like what's helped you about that second part, like what's helped you to learn how to hit it. Hmm. Let me think. Um, I think maybe there isn't really an answer to that. It's just that, you know, you, you just practice and you, you're the part of your, like, when you, when you try to do the thing enough, then a new module in your brain grows out that can do the thing. Um, So I, I I don't know that I really have any any theory like explicit theory that I've I've learned of how to how to draw or anything. Um, I've uh, sort of just because oh well yeah I guess there are things like like I've learned I've learned that um, when I draw faces that are at a bit of an angle that that's kind of makes them a bit goofier and funnier. Um, rather than, you know, having the, the eyes level. And and when I draw the eyes further apart, um, that that also makes, you know, makes the character a bit a bit funnier. Um so there's, there's little little tricks like that. And having having nice thick lines, uh, that, that works well. Um oh and, and there's there's stuff like um like 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 with with this this this, this style of animation. Um One thing I, I wasn't sure about at first was, um, you know, how many how many frames should there be here? Um, and it turns out three frames, like two frames, it, it, it sort of looks, it just looks like it's bouncing back and forth between two different things. But with three frames, it, it kind of has a, it breaks it up in a way that it's not the, the, um, the cycle isn't so obvious. Um, And you know what? What is the what is the keyframe rate? That was another thing I needed to experiment with. And so it's, it's 10, 10 frames per second. Um, and then and then the, another question was like, should the should the background coloring should that also wiggle as, in the same way as the line art? Um, and, but when I tried that, it was it was just too busy. So um, yeah, there's, there's stuff like yeah, just experimenting with with uh, how the thing is put together um, to yeah get the get the Yeah, you know, just just figure out how 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 it it works good. Hmm. One of the things that I'm so curious about is like what makes you tick. Like especially, you know, you're putting in a lot of effort with these projects and being very prolific. And I think you've, um, hmm, almost are sort of underselling yourself and uh, being modest. And like I see you. working really hard at what you're doing and making a lot of stuff. And I mean, 3000 drawings, that's, that's a lot. And, you know, working on hundred animations and these videos and making this app. And I wonder sort of what makes you tick as you're working on these things and being so prolific. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, I, I mean, from the inside, it doesn't, it doesn't, feel like I'm being prolific and it doesn't feel like I'm I'm doing good good stuff or whatever it, it, it just it just like I have these because I, I I have such such grand ambitions of like I want I want to make the Muppets version 2.0 and and like make that be a huge like make make a make a media empire out of that mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like compared to that ambition I'm, i'm just i'm just radically failing at everything um uh but yeah no I, i don't know i'm just a kind of neurotic person um so i i i, I think i'm always going to feel like that um but what yeah uh what makes me tick um um i don't know i, I think i think you might need to i don't know what the baseline is I, so i don't i don't know where i where i deviate um um so you might you might need to like if, if you maybe if you if you if you if you talk like prompt me with a specific project or something i might, I might be able to unpack what was going on in my brain to get to a certain end end result hmm. maybe hmm.
Yeah, I mean, if you think about a recent day where, I mean, I don't know what your days are like, but I'm kind of imagining the way you described it, that maybe, you know, there's a big chunk of time where you set aside and you're doing a lot of different drawings or animations or trying different things. And I, I'm curious, like, what made you sit down to do that? And, you know, say you're there for several hours, like what kept you going and uh, what what's sort of the dream that's inspiring all of that? I mean, you talked about this Muppets 2.0 vision, but you know, like, what is it about that that inspires you? I mean, there, there's like seven questions in there. So take it whichever way mm -hmm. you want to take it. Okay. Um, so uh, in terms of, yeah, what, what, where, what, what, what's motivating me for the, to make a, make a thing. I mean, I talked about before how I was drawing comics when I had insomnia. Um, I, uh, yeah, late, lately, uh, I've, my, uh, yeah, I've, I've, my mental health's been a bit all over the place because I don't know, like I don't, I don't have a job at the moment, and that, that makes me e extremely anxious. And um, my, 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 yeah, my sleep's always been pretty bad. Um, yeah, but I've, yeah, I've, I've gotten to within the last month, say, I've, I've achieved new depths of of sleep deprivation. And that's just like, it's, it's phenomenal how much of a difference that makes. Um, like, like I've seen within the course of 24 hours, um, my brain can construct a narrative of I'm in the grips of a death spiral. And like, I, I can, I can go through my like life history and like see, pick out all the points that are pointing in this, this like downward slope towards oblivion. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to die under a bridge within it. Like I, I, think I can convince myself I'm on track to die under a bridge within a, within a matter of, um, a matter of, of, of a few months or something. Um, but then, yeah, like within 20, 24 hours later, after maybe after I've gotten a bit of sleep, I can be like, I can pick out a completely different set of points from my life and that that show like a, a an upwards trajectory and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm on track to do great, amazing stuff. It's, it's going to be great. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so, but yeah, so I, I've had, I've, sometimes I have episodes where I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I can't sleep and I'm, 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 I've got all this anxious energy, so I need to, channel that into something and and comics uh, uh, uh draw, drawings are often a good good way to do that uh because i can i can i can take these these like these winds of uh of uh of of emotional uh vicissitudes that are that are uh you know just 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 poking me in the in the side and, and blowing me all over the place and if, if i can if i can sort of like draw them and draw the draw what the feeling is and like draw a little character who's who's experiencing that feeling that it's kind of, kind of um it humanizes it and also makes it manageable it, it sort of packages it up in a in a way that it's like oh yeah that's that's it's not this external psychic force that's that's blowing me around it's it's this this little little guy is the is the voice that's saying that i don't know that that's being being anxious about something rather um so yeah by sort of like deconstructing my the contents of my brain uh and reassembling them as little characters that that sort of makes my psychology more manageable um so it, yeah it, a lot of my drawing is, comes out of uh co coping and surviving with a fairly turbulent psychology um and it, yeah so some yeah like the drawing drawing comics desperately in the middle of the night to distract my brain um um what else uh more 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 questions or a reminder of what, what some of those other, other questions were please hmm. what tickles you about this idea of a muppets 2.0 like media mm -hmm. empire and uh like what inspired you about the muppets originally and what do you imagine that would look like when you made your own they yeah they i mean that's there's this this thing of the the muppets have this well hmm hmm i mean the yeah the 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 muppets are part have this this theme of of just like anything can be alive like a Swedish chef can be making making 
uh, I don't know, cooking cooking eggs or whatever, and then the the eggs will be li- their own little puppet characters, and they'll they'll come out and they'll have their own little thing. Um, and I, I yeah, I, I love that that kind of world where everything is alive, everything is a character, um, and especially if all the characters have have strong personalities and are brightly coloured and big eyes. There's something um, something about that. It feels very um, it makes the world seem more interesting and alive and meaningful. Um and it's the same sort of imp- yeah, like putting putting I also I've gone through phases where I would like put googly eyes on all of my possessions and that's that's a similar sort of impulse um wanting to make everything you know make everything in the world your friend that's the that's the that's the goal uh this kind of animism friendly animism um uh and I don't know. I I I I want to. I want. I want to. I also. <laughs> I um. So I want. I want to kind of like just push that idea as far as it'll go. Like how 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 much of the 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 world can you can I can I bring under this this regime of everything being a being a character? Just because that's like I want to. I want to impose my my own aesthetic sensibilities on the world um so that it it it's more aesthetically pleasing to me um yeah but i, I don't know i'm i'm I also you know i i, I, I want to I wanna like have to have have money and stuff so i want to want to figure out what some way to monetize that um but um yeah yeah i think that's 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 my motivation how does that experience of say the muppets or your own drawings where everything's alive and every everything's this strong character and has these big googly eyes like how does that compare to your everyday experience just like walking around or being around people or being in your house or whatever it is um well, it's it's so much richer. I mean, I, I um, like sometimes I walk around, uh, you know, at, at, and I, I see the trees and the birds and stuff, and I'm like, and I try to imagine what it would look like if if everything did have a, a face and and everything, and it, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just like I kind of wish I had that 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 doodle vision of of, of just like having it, being able to. Uh, uh, superimpose goofy cartoon faces on everything, because it it just yeah it just makes everything more enjoyable. You know you, you see you see you see a picture of a smile, or a smiley face, and it, it makes you like slightly happier. Um, it, it, and there it varies in, in sort of how susceptible you are at different times. Um, and but. I think there's there's normally like some non-zero effect of it, like improving your mood slightly if you if you see a see a a, a, a character smiling, and if you see bright colors, and if you see um, if you see cute characters, like these are all these are all just like stimulus that make you slightly happier. Um, and so you know why 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 not just just turn these up to maximum and 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 just try and get as much of that stimulus into your into your sensory holes as, as possible um um because yeah the the real real life is, is so boring in comparison like every, everything's just like these 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 dull browns and and greens and it, it's it's you know it, it can be great like there are moments where where you know you look out at it from a mountain and see all this stuff and it's, it's it's breathtaking but most of the time it's not not like that it's just just kind of boring shapes or, or you know patterns of, of grass and, and whatnot 
especially if it's if it's like overcast. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's I I um. I think I think I think something worth aiming for is making stuff that feels more real than reality, um, um, which kind of creating engineering super stimulus to to like like cartoon characters often they feel they feel feel more like people than than actual people do because because they're engineered to exude personality um and and there's the stories of, of of like jim henson the the muppets guy how he, he would he'll be wearing kermit the frog on his hand and then he'd go out it, we, uh he'd talk to children and children like didn't see him he like he 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 would be invisible to them and all they would see is kermit the frog um and I th yeah, I, th I think that it speaks to this 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 thing of of you can make stuff that's more real than real life, and that if you if you surround yourself with that stuff, then you you live a more enriched uh, existence. Use this word animism a bit ago. Uh, can you say more about what that word means to you and how you relate to it? Hmm. I think um I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I have anything interesting to say about that. It's it's uh I, I, I engage I engage with the word at a fairly superficial level, I think. Um it's uh I'm just vaguely aware that according to anthropological narratives at least there's this sort of this um progression of 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 sort of human society from or human human metaphysics from like animism where everything is is stuff you know the with every the, the reason everything does what it does is because everything is alive and everything has its own personality through to you know polytheism and then monotheism and then uh materialism something like that so yeah I, I, yeah i have this, this sort of like cartoon anthropology understanding of what animism is um that, that just vaguely maps onto the thing i'm talking about yeah part of the reason i ask is i feel like i i'm i could imagine you thinking oh like animism is this worldview that people used to have but it's not really how things are but it's kind of nice for our brains so it's nice to have drawings that are mm -hmm. like that or i could imagine something of like oh that's how it really is and doodling this way is a way to get closer to that and that's good or something totally different and i'm kind of curious how you hold that yeah it's, it's definitely the first one where i i i trying to I'm, I'm i'm pretty um yeah pretty pretty physics pilled i i uh <laughs> i um have a a fairly uh you know just my metaphysics is that there's there's atoms and then there's stuff you make up and you can you have a lot of scope in the kind of stuff you can make up um and i'm trying to i'm trying to engineer kind of uh brain software that is uh conducive to flourishing um but that doesn't but 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 which doesn't doesn't you know map onto anything in reality um so yeah it, it, it's sort of a, a, a fun fun game rather than a serious belief uh, the, yeah it's a, the get the game of animism gotcha I'm also curious about your relationship to characters and the characters that you've seen in different shows or art that you like, and also the characters that you've started creating in your own doodles. And uh, yeah, what's that been like for you to create these characters? Okay, I find characters really interesting because I um I didn't about uh, one year ago. 
at 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 most maybe 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 even you know eight months ago i think i i like explicitly wrote i do not understand how characters work like how how do how do writers come up with characters and and sort of simulate a whole other person's brain inside their own brain and then figure out like what would this character do um so i i, I kind of uh that 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 became a bit of a obsession. How 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 do, how do characters work? Um, and so I I uh, one 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 angle of attack I thought on how to how to understand this thing is, um, what uh, what 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 are what are characters that I particularly like from from other media, and like can I can I sort of reverse engineer what's what's interesting about them, um. And if I can, you know, figure out, is there an archetype of character that I particularly like? Can I just create a new instance of that class? Uh, so, yeah, and I tried doing that. But then then also one time, I, I remember I was on a plane, and I think I just watched Fantastic Mr. Fox recently. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's a, that's an archetype. The, the kind of, this, this showman mischief guy who's like tall and wears a top hat and, 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 and it's always, it's always got schemes up his sleeves. Um, and I, I thought about that and thought of other instances of that. And, and so then I just like tried to draw that in the simplest way. And that became, that became my mischief man character. Um, and I sort of, I sort of just through, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, this is back and forth between just raw intuition and, theory-driven engineering of, of, of coming up with these characters because I was, uh, yeah, I, I, so, I sort of wrote down what are the characteristics of this, of this character. So these are like, uh, like tall and slender and um, sort of gangly, uh, wears a top hat, um, has a big, big grin on his face. And so then, then I, then I sort of tried to draw that and drew that a few different ways. And sometimes it seemed more or less to capture the, the essence of this, this character. Um, and then sometimes I would draw something and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's, that's, I didn't intend that, but that, that kind of enhances this, this thing I'm trying to communicate. Um, so then I, I try and understand how that worked and try and engineer more of that. Um, and yeah then sometimes after thinking about characters for a while i'd just be like my brain would just be like hey here's some new characters and then i'd, I'd just draw them and or write them down or I'd, I'd, I'd like have certain constraints that i was trying to fill like um there's a you know sometimes i think about like what what is a what are some characters i like and i'll, I'll come up with an example and i'm, I'm like is this dynamic between two characters that i really like in this this particular comic can i can i sort of recreate that and I think about that and I try to come up with characters to do that, but it, it's, I don't, didn't quite have all the pieces there. And then, you know, maybe I'd be thinking about some characters in some other context. And then I'd be like, Oh, this, these are the puzzle pieces I need to fill in, fill in this thing. Uh, and then, you know, one time I, I just realized that like, Oh yeah, there's, there's a character, a developed character here. Um, and I'm like, I, I need, I need a character to fill the specific sort of like comedic or, 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 um, a particular role in a in a dynamic um or yes and sometimes i just i just like doodle a bunch of a bunch of different characters to, like just based on shapes or like i'll just draw shapes and see what kind of personalities i can bring out from them or i, I can um if i if i like look at images of of fish or something and see like can i make characters out of these what 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 char what what kind of personality do i see in these fish and can i recreate that and enhance that personality um um yeah and and like i have but i'm i'm also trying to map different parts of my brain onto characters to to sort of do that thing of of deconstructing my brain to give it more handles and make it more legible to myself so I can actually manage my psychology better. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, 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 uh, so yeah, yeah, I've got like different parts of my personality seem to seem to have quite distinct characters corresponding to them. Like there's the, 
this the the mad scientist character who's who's kind of um completely useless at kind of re real life and managing himself but it just always has these these wacky projects and sometimes like really cool stuff comes out of that the sort of like wallace and gromit slash uh the guy from cloudy with the chance of meatballs archetype um and uh yeah i've, I've got this this the uh there's also this this kind of like lost character who doesn't feel at home in the world and and is, is wandering around uh sort of looking looking for a home um i mean i haven't, I haven't published much with that character but i've, I've been um I mean, I've been drawing some some comics with with that that, that character, and that, that that sort of like speaks to a a theme of my experience, um, and that's that's nice to to sort of capture that and 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 articulate that. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm a, but I, yeah, and then also this is like personality traits that I want to develop. Uh, and I, I kind of have this hope that maybe if I like spend more time developing characters who who have those traits then maybe I can I can I can actually like build up a module in my brain that that does the thing uh like things like be being a functional human being with a with a uh, uh I don't know like a normal career uh, who, can, who can who can actually like complete uh complete tasks in a way that is uh i don't know just just a functional member of society <laughs> has making these characters changed how you see other people in your life yeah 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 um so it's it's been uh it's been really interesting seeing how other people respond to the characters cuz some some like a few people have really latched on to one one or other character that I've I've drawn. Um, um yeah the, the 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 biggest one is um there's uh there's this one character who has I've uh like the, the I don't know just a, a, a sort of scarlet colored female character who's who's taken on a few different forms at different times. Um and one one uh that, that that was partly in this character as as it one was at one point partly informed by um by by uh uh what what's her what's her canonical name nina nina colada um and uh yeah then then she like really liked that and um so then and and she was like wanted wanted more of, of that that character representation of herself so I, I sort of like leaned into into putting more of of her delightful personality into into this character um and so this has been like a, a back and forth that way um and yeah then that, that, that's that's kind of been interesting to, to have conversations of like how, how like what what would this character do in this situation or like how should this comic unfold um with this character based on kind of uh predicated on the, the the idea that this character is in some sense you or this or it's like aspect of you um so like what, what do you what do you think this character should do um and then yeah that's that's a, that's a really interesting way to get to know someone better um yeah and then and then like anansi said he he identified with the um the mr chaos character who's this uh this this character i drew one time and um behenix said he, he um when he saw uh one other character who's like a um just a a, a big like a, a cyclops a purple cyclops character he said he saw this character and just stared at it for a few minutes before like seeing anything else about the comic which is a, a really interesting response um but yeah yeah no it's, it's so I, I i do find uh i i i, I collect sometimes the, the characters are, are more or less are like 
somewhat informed by other people and then and then also when people respond to characters in a strong way that's also kind of a a sign that there's there's something that this is this is like a an interesting archetype um and then then that makes me think a bit more about like this the person who latched onto it uh what is it about them that that resonates with this archetype and, and how can i how can i uh can i can i like take stuff I know about this person to, to build out that character. What does doodling mean to you? Mm -hmm. I think uh, one, one thing it does is it, or that I, I hope it does is that it, it tries to remind me not to take stuff too seriously and not overthink everything like this. This isn't, uh i'm not i'm not i'm not the goal is not to create grand works of art it's to just try lots of stuff like it just just keep keep experimenting figure out how the how the medium works um like make it joyful make it fun make it experimental um yeah keep it light keep it playful um Doodling is also doodle. doodle uh, I, I also find um, like I, I didn't I didn't so I I I chose Hamish Doodles as a as a as a handle on my social medias, um, you know, a couple of years ago or something, just because I, I don't know it, it, I don't don't fully remember what my thought process was, but it wasn't I wasn't attaching too much importance to the word doodle, but I, I found like people seem to really latch on to it like and then and then i they were just like oh you're the doodle guy i'm like oh yeah okay i guess i am and so then i've sort of leaned more and more into that over time um because it is it is a like it's a fun it's a fun word to say and it's sort of a conceptually fun uh thing it's, it's like it's a very like it, it, i have this this mental image of like what what is doodling this kind of like loopy kind of um a, a, a joyful a, like just a pen dancing around on a page not 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 being self-conscious um so yeah that, and that seems like a good it's, it's, yeah it's a joyful a joyful vibe which is 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 in line with the, the stuff i talked about like you know wanting to uh have lots of cute smiley faces and stuff to 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 engineer joy maxing What makes it fun for you? Like, what helps it stay fun for you? Hmm. Well, I, I yeah, I, I, I like draw these characters, and then I look at them, and I'm like, I just feel really happy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the um, that's maybe the the pulling force, um, but then, and then the pushing force is a combination of, um, kind of. Psych psychology management when when I like have my my brain is exploding with stuff and I just need to get it out, um, and also having these like big being inspired by other artists and works of art that I I just find really have enriched my experience of the world and wanting to do make more of that stuff, um, having these these like artistic ambitions that I want to and self self-expression ambitions and wanting wanting to wanting to let other people see how I see the world something like that um this is like Proust Proust said that the the point of art is to like let other people see the world through your lens um and I, th I like I, I I kind of think I've got a kind of interesting lens and I I, I do kind of want to show people that it's a point of procedure or something like that but i wonder like all these characters that you've created is there something that you do to help you track the different characters that you have or like their characteristics or their personality or how you draw them or anything like that no not really it's, i mean that's this kind of the the like the doodle aesthetic is just you know make, draw a bunch of stuff and maybe something will jump out at you and it'll it'll be like, oh, I want to spend more time with this character. And then I, I sort of wonder what 
what what the world that this character lives in is like. But a lot of the time it's just like, you know, characters are coming, coming and going. It's just an open door. Stuff comes. Sometimes it, there's nothing particularly interesting about it. So it just it just it just dies away. And it, it's, just, it's just this organic evolutionary process of of just stuff that's interesting will draw my attention more. And um uh yeah, then I'll uh spend more time with it. You've mentioned the Muppets and, and a few other yeah. things. Uh, what are some pieces of art or artists or even people who don't make visual art or doodles or anything like that that have been most inspiring for you? So um, I think the, the big ones are the Hyperbole and a Half, the, the blog slash webcomic. Um, the webcomic Nedroid, uh, which is about a bird who likes skateboarding and a half bear, half potato called Bear Tato, which is, is so delightfully goofy. Um, there's also, yeah, the Muppets. There is early Walt Disney, especially Pinocchio. Um, uh, and sort of vaguely, vaguely descending in terms of how influential it is. Um, and to, from literature, um, I, I love Catch-22 and In Infinite Jest and um, Count of Monte Cristo. Um, what else? Uh, and music. Um, there's this, this one, one, this, uh, this, this is, this is I, I don't aspire to, to make anything remotely similar to this because um, I'm not. I'm not a big music person, but um, this is one one Beethoven piece called the um, the second movement of the fifth piano concerto, which is is just like it, to my mind, uh, it's it, it's mind blowingly beautiful. It's just it's just so much more beautiful than any other piece of music in the world, um, and I'm, I'm kind of endlessly mystified why I've never heard anyone else talk about this thing because it's just so much so obviously better than everything else um let's see what else uh other books uh, i really like um i like uh stuff that plays with the canvas and and this kind of meta and and um uh has has like maybe several layers of story to it like there's a base story and then there's a story about the storyteller and then maybe the storyteller is embedded in another story. Um, so kind of Don Quixote and House of Leaves. And um, is this uh, a, uh, a novel slash comic uh, by an Australian guy called Story Maze, which I really like. Um, what else? Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. In terms of web comics, um, I like XKCD. I like um, Butter Safe. I like Dinosaur Comics. Uh, Wait, but why? Uh, blogs. Wait, but why? Slate, Slate Star Codex. Um, 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 YouTube. I don't know. I like I like all the animation YouTubers. There, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. Um. Yeah, so I, I think that's, that's that's roughly a catalog of the the stuff that I have bouncing around in my brain that I try to try to emulate to some degree or other. What inspired you, or what did you like about early Disney and like Pinocchio? It it has this sense of magic, which um, magic. I I, I have I have this 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 impression that magic is is a it's it's like the, it's it's the specific aesthetic and the specific kind of headspace maybe where a magical a magical understanding of the world is one in which anything is possible and uh everything is alive and it's it's this, this this sort of 
elevated more real than real thing. Um, and there's certain kinds of art that capture this particular feeling or this particular vibe. Um, and early, Di yeah, early Disney does that. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a extremely meaningful, um, thing to experience this, 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 me this magic aesthetic. Um, and so that, that seems worth, worth learning how to, how to generate and how to cultivate. Can you say more about the literature side of things that have inspired you? Like, I was pleased that you mentioned Don Quixote because I love Don Quixote and you mentioned Infinite Jest and you mentioned Proust mm -hmm. earlier and House of Leaves. Like, I don't know, anything that you'd like to say about reading novels and fiction and how that's impacted you? I am... Um... When I was at university, I, I like found a list of the 100 greatest novels and, and sort of worked through that. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an audiobook person. I'm, I'm not I'm very slow as a, as a manual reader. Um, I love I love going on long walks and, and listening to stuff. Um, 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 uh, ba ba ba. I lost nice track of the thread in my head. Um, yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah. So I, I listened to the hundred greatest novels, roughly, except for One Piece. That's 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 I've never I've had like three attempts at that, and I've never managed to store the whole cast of characters in my head. So I always just get confused and, and give up. Um, but yeah, I I uh, I uh, I don't know. Hey, uh, novel novels are uh, novels are good. Yeah. Um, I I uh, when when I was when I was walking the TA the uh, the the through hike. Um, I also that was I listened to a lot of audiobooks then. Um, that was that was how I got through Proust. Um, Don Quixote. Um, um. Yeah, Don Quixote is fascinating, but especially the the Miguel de Cervantes just has a has a fascinating biography. He was he was actually kind of what was it like he, he was captured by pirates and he went into he was stuck in a did he write Don Quixote while he was in a Moorish jail or something hmm. and then there was that thing where he was um he like wrote the first half of it and that was supposed to be the whole novel and then that was quite successful and then someone wrote a knockoff and there was a knockoff sequel floating around for a while and then in in the second half of Don Quixote he um. I think he does. He does he like meet the, the 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 imposter of of like the person who's pretending to be. I don't know if he does, but I know there's sequel. a bunch of jokes about the sequel and how it was a knockoff and not as good. Right, right, right. Yeah, and that's 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 this this fun like playing with the canvas thing. That's the, the kind of the doodle doodle aesthetic. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's you're not you're not taking the world too seriously. So it's lightly held and it's a uh, this 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 just imaginative um, exercise of whatever anything goes and uh, and uh, yeah like every 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 box is something to be played with including the box cons cons that contains the imaginative world in which the art exists mm. Mm. can you tell me more about this hope that you have to build this Muppets 2.0 empire type thing or any other ambitions that you have for your future? Um, um, <laughs> um I don't know. I, 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 I feel myself getting kind of shy. I'm like, Oh, I don't know. No, I don't have ambitions. No, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> um don't 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 look at me I'm, I'm i'm just i'm just i'm just here doing doing silly little stuff um 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 hmm. i want to i want to i i have so much junk in my head from learning from my phase when i was trying to learn everything so i think i know i i have so much knowledge about philosophy and physics and maths and blah 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 i kind of want to and i want to i want to figure out how to re 
recapitulate all that stuff uh and and ex explain like ex explain all the stuff i know in my own particular aesthetic style um so i want to i want to kind of like i'm working on a, a, a blog post at the moment where I, I try to explain uh philosophy of mind and where my 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 views on on consciousness um and it's, it's been a lot of fun i'm because I'm, 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 I'm kind of taking this kind of stuffy academic subject and giving it and i like personifying all the concepts and and drawing silly cartoons to go with them it, it kind of makes it feel much more alive and and human um so i want to do more of that stuff um sort of ed educational whatnot um yeah i want to i want to i want to i want to make a body of work i want to i want to make lots of lots of videos lots of animations that 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 uh capture my my aesthetic sensibilities um yeah i want to i want to i want to i want to be a you know i i i really 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 want to be a a, a professional artist and and to to like just yeah like a webcomic artist or something and and, and have a way to, to like sustain myself off of that that that's that's like that's the dream. I want to, um, if I, if I can achieve that, then, then life is good. Um, um, what else? Yeah. I don't know. If, uh, sort of a hypothetical curveball type question. So bear with me here, but mm -hmm. if you imagine that you are successful in the future at your ambitions and, you know, you fast forward 20, 30, 40 years and you're like you now you're like pleased with how that all goes what do you imagine your future self would tell you now what advice do you imagine he would give you uh, about how to proceed from here yeah that's a that's a great question um i i think in 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 theory i've i've i have spent a bunch of time thinking about this um but I'm not sure if I've actually come up with any good answers that I, I have ready to go. So let me let me think. Um, I'd say, well, actually, actually, what I can do is I can I can just I can apply it backwards, right? And I can I can say like, what advice would I give to my past self? And then that that's probably still going to be true, of of like, what would I what would my future self say to me if if things have gone well? Um, and and yeah, I, I think I think like a, a big thing is just don't. I, I shouldn't be so self-conscious about my, my, my stuff. I should, I should just like keep making it. That's great. More, more, more hot girl energy. Just everything I, I make is great. <laughs> don't, don't, don't think too hard about it. Um, don't, 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 uh, I don't know. Don't, don't poo poo everything I make. Um, don't, don't be neurotic about everything I make and, and, and think of that makeup imaginary standards that i'm always falling behind just have fun just have fun with it and and make 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 friends make friends while making art collaborate with people um yeah do the minimum about <laughs> do the minimum amount of work to 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 keep keep yourself afloat financially and stuff and yeah just focus on the focus on the 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 project which is is make making great art and make as much as possible and 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 publish it don't like don't abandon i shouldn't abandon projects so much like because I, I have so many projects where i get like 60 to 80 percent of the way and then and sort of give up and i i, I uh, so i think I, like i'm trying to figure out ways that i can um publish half complete stuff like if, if i've got like 10 half finished projects maybe i can i can just just staple them together to make one with, with like a little bit of of uh framing extra material and then and then and then that's now a thing um so yeah I, I, I don't know i should i should do do more of that stuff um but yeah just 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 don't 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 um yeah yeah i don't know it's it's, it's uh 
yeah, yeah. You have any forms of creative expression that you like to do outside of art or doodling? Yeah, I I I, uh, I learned how, I learned how to play the ukulele earlier this year. That's been great fun. Yeah, it's it's a everyone should learn it. It's 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 seems like it's hands down the best instrument. I've um I I, I used to play piano a fair bit, but ukulele is like you can you can carry it everywhere. It's very portable and it only has four strings. It's very easy to learn. Like it within ten minutes, you can learn the like three four chords you need to to sort of start playing songs. Um, so I, I yeah I try and try and make up songs and and play them on ukulele. Um, what else? Uh, I try writing a bit. Um, 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 I quite like coding and doing like data visualizations and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I want to get, yeah, I want to get more into making the web dev and, and making websites and whatnot, um, and games. Um, 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 yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about that you'd like to share more about or dive in more deeply about? Can I ask you some questions? Of course. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, what's, what's, what's your story briefly? I, 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 I don't know if you've published this, this else, elsewhere, but, um, yeah, I, I like from, from listening to the, this, the podcast, it's, it's, I've gotten a bit of a, a taste of who you are, but I, I, I'm really curious where you're, where you come from. Hmm. Well, the short thing is I trained at a monastery for about five years in two stints. And for the last couple of years, I've been out doing my own thing. And um, part of the reason I've been wanting to talk to you is I've been doing visual art for the last couple of years and lots of procreate stuff and drawing. And that was never really something that I was doing in my childhood. Or I mean, I did a little bit as a kid, but it wasn't like a continuous theme or something. And usually it's more like writing and books and stuff like that. And I've just had so much fun learning drawing and using Procreate and uh, really fell in love with the app and yeah. have been impressed with the things that I've been able to make. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it's something that scratches an itch for me and it's something that I'd like to learn more about and drawing and art and still feel pretty early in my drawing art career as it were. And uh, yeah, it's nice to talk to other artists and hear what their creative practice is like and what it means to them. And uh, yeah, that's, that's some things about me. Yeah. You, you, you've you got, a, you've got a really interesting style where you incorporate words in an interesting way. Um, but this is like often text in the background or in the on, on objects in the foreground, right? What's, what's the, what's the story with that? Hmm. Yeah, I think I, realized at a certain point, you know, I did a hundred drawings in 2021 in Procreate. And it's, I don't remember exactly when it happened, but at a certain point I was like, oh, I think I'd been keeping drawing separate from writing. And then um, part of the motivation always was sort of to be able to illustrate my own writing and do blog posts. And I realized, oh, I can actually use my words in my drawings and both that is more interesting to me because I can like illustrate ideas that I have or words that I write. And also it makes them more powerful. I think it's almost like I have a ton of skill points in writing and words, and then I don't have as much skill points in art and drawing. Mm. And yeah. um, it can, I can sort of use the fact that I'm really good at words to make my art more compelling, both to me and to other people right off the bat. And so it's been fun to play with different ways of using words or different things that I've written in my drawings. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. The, the, the thing about having more uh, skill points at, at words than drawings is, is that's the, I'm, I'm completely the opposite. I feel like I, I, I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't 
put one word in front of the other, but like I can just like miles ahead with drawing. So I, I try to, um, uh, yeah, but I, I, like so much of the world I live in is other people's words and I like try to figure out as a, as a, as a drawing person, how to navigate a word person world. I, I, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Um, yeah. Huh. Huh. Um, Yeah, another another thing I was curious about was on on, on the 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 episode with um uh with with, with Bloobs about about the um how she did the Appalachian Trail, um uh you you yeah you mentioned having done some some walking pilgrimages and and that that was uh uh you know there's this you've 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 picked up things from that that uh you can. Like this, or the, the, you said something like this: this, this lessons you've learned from that that you can detect other people have learned who have also done walking pilgrimages. And I, I was, I was really curious about that, but you didn't, you didn't expand on that. Uh, do, do, do you think you could say something about that right now? Sure. Well, um, I mean, the first thing to say is just I feel like a kinship when I, you know, talk to you or Bloob or someone else like that that's done a lot of walking in different contexts and. Um, it's like, oh, someone who speaks my language and there's, um, mm -hmm. it's like knowing that you've been through something similar together and yeah, it's different, different trails and circumstances and whatever. But for me, that was really, yeah, I really did. Well, I always walked, but I walked a lot in high school and at other times of my life. Mm -hmm. But when I did, I did two walking pilgrimages and for me, it was really a spiritual practice and mm -hmm. there were things that I learned through walking pilgrimage that I think, you know, like at that point when I did my first walking pilgrimage, I'd probably done like 20 or 30 meditation retreats or something. And um, I went on to do even more before my second pilgrimage. And I think in some ways what I learned through walking pilgrimage is like, ideally you'd learn on a meditation retreat as well. But for me, I learned it through walking and it was just much easier for my body and my nervous system and my mind and my heart or whatever mm -hmm. to learn that through walking and pilgrimage. And I think that I see similar lessons in people who have done walking pilgrimage or other ways of life um, where they're sort of trusting and surrendering and uh, going with the flow and um, you know, mm -hmm. that might look different in different ways, but uh, I, I feel sort of a kinship when I know someone's been through that experience and it's easy to imagine that they've had sort of similar lessons that I learned on my walking pilgrimage. And um, yeah, there's a few different things, but one is sort of trusting my intuition or what wants to happen over some logical mm -hmm. idea of something or what I think should happen right. and allowing things to unfold and, um, I think there's also a way in which you are okay with simplicity and you kind of realize, Hey, I don't need a lot to be happy or to thrive. Like yeah. if I have a place to sleep and I have food and then I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah. um, just like, wow, being alive on this earth is really beautiful and, um, that there's beauty everywhere. And also that you can be content and happy. Like, yeah, I mean, learn ways to kind of be interested in what's happening regardless of, you know, what's happening around you, you can kind of ask yourself questions or be present with your body or whatever. I think different people do different things, but that's kind of nice to know you don't need as much to be entertained or feel fulfilled in the moment. And yeah, those are some things. Hmm. Yeah. The thing, the thing about like going with the flow rather than having logical, uh, logic brain dictating everything. Um, yeah, this, I feel like there's a really important thing there about how I, I remember I was, I was feeling really nervous about, about going to some town or something because I, I, I like, I didn't know where the supermarket was or there was something like some detail I hadn't, hadn't been able to figure out through research. Um, and, but then I, I like, when I actually got there, it was just like a big sign saying that the thing I needed is this way. Um, and that, that seemed like a big, big life lesson of, of like, you can't, always predict how things are going to work out uh but when you actually turn up at the place you know you'll have more information and you can figure it out from there and sort of like trusting that your future self is at least as smart as you and and like has more resources probably uh that that there was um yeah that was, that was a big lesson for me hmm. Hmm. i love hearing that and uh 
knowing that that's been such a big part of your life. And I don't know, it reminds me um, how to put this. I, don't know, I think early in our conversation, you used the word like disappointment and you said that everything you've done since the, that Instagram thing has been kind of a disappointment. And right. uh, I don't know. Uh, I wanted to reflect that the, at least from my perspective, I'm like, you're doing great. I think I love what you okay. make and I see you really throwing yourself into what you're doing. And, you know, it sounds like you don't have a job right now and you're trying to work out some practical things about how things fit together. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you haven't quite found what you're looking for with your style or ways of you're doing things, but I'm like, you know, you're really going for it and putting work into what you're doing and creating things that make me smile and make other people smile. And, you know, that I think are worth celebrating. And, um, yeah. I would never, I don't know. I, I would describe what you're doing as the opposite. Like I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing and I, I'm inspired by what you're doing. And I think you should keep going. Oh, wow. Thank, thank you so much. That's, um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have a, a very, a very critical voice in my brain. Who's, who's always just like, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's, that's very kind. And it, that, that, that means a lot to me. I was imagining just now that the orange character would be blushing <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of red. Can you see, I can see a little bit of red. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I should, this is, um, this is maybe the 13th or so iteration of this, this, um, this, 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 this little app thing. Huh. Um, and it's like, I've, I've simplified the, the basic concept down to something that's much easier to customize now. And, and yeah, so I'd, um, I've got another idea of, of like what I want the next version to be, but yeah, it's like, I think I should, I'm almost at a point where I can just, I, I could just like draw an extra layer, like a, just export a PNG from Procreate of, um, like if, if I just drew, drew a layer of the blushing on top of this and then exported that and then put that in, um, but then in a certain directory, then I could, I could just, um, you know, customize in my spreadsheet, what key should turn that on. Mm -hmm. And then, then that would work. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, maybe I should, I should incorporate that in. I also need to, I also need to incorporate like eyebrow expressions and different, different, um, different, different, yeah, different expressions, different mouth expressions. Um, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. It's so cool. I know it's been really charming to talk to you in this way. It makes me, can you describe something about how this application works? Yeah. Um, let me think. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got a Google sheet, which basically says if, uh, you know, if the space bar is pressed, oh, okay. Well, so first of all, the, the, the H it's an HTML, HTML file, which has currently three image uh, elements um and every tenth of a second uh every tenth of a second it cycles through uh so yeah e e each image tag has, has a has a as a directory associated with it um so it'll be like uh slash mouth slash smile uh, and then within that directory, there'll be like image one dot png, image two dot png, image three dot png, and every every tenth of a second it cycles through to the next image in that sequence. So you know, image one, uh, you know, smile slash image one png, smile smile slash image two dot png, smile uh, slash image three dot png, then back to back to the first one. Um, and as I move the mouse around. Um, the coordinates of the cursor um, are sort of scaled down and the mouth and the eye images are placed at those like scaled down coordinates so that I can, you know, move the face around with the, with the um, thing, with the, the mouse. Um, and yeah, and in the, in the spreadsheet that changes the, the, the directory that's that's like corresponding to each image um so when i press space the the mouth image goes from like slash mouth slash closed to slash mouth slash open or something um 
and then uh so that, yeah and, and then when i press when i lift the space key it, it maps back to the original one um and uh yeah i think that's yeah so, so, so it's like to add new stuff i just need to add new entries to the spreadsheet and i need to draw new images and export them as pngs and then just put them in a in a directory and 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 that's that's all it is hmm. what would you say you've learned from working on that project hmm I have learned that it's the first, okay. So the first iteration of this, I, I wrote code that would generate, I, I, I like specified all of the coordinates for what all of the lines should be. Like I, I, I got out, you know, grid paper, drew the character uh, and I think yeah. I even I even um, figured out the the sort of geometry of how to construct a line using Bezier curves or something, which which was like non. And then oh yeah, and then and then I also also in the first iteration I was moving the face around in in three dimensions on a on a spherical surface. So I I, I needed to figure out a bunch of geometry of like how to uh, take the coordinates on the plane of the screen. And project them onto a sphere and then project that back into two-dimensional coordinates wow. um so that was that was all like you know 600 lines of code or something it was, it was all, all very very complicated um and it's very hard to update and maintain and make adjustments to um and it also wasn't like that good um but then after and so and then and so then i like made a second version that was like a bit a bit better um and then i made a I don't know, make it, maybe maybe made like another third complete version. And then I went through, you know, five to 10 iterations where I just like tried different approaches and then gave up after a certain while because like the, just the code wasn't wasn't coming together in, in, a, in a nice way. And I thought, you know, it's, I might as well start again. Um, and, then, and then I just kind of like dropped it for a while, maybe half a year. And I came back to it recently, and now now there's now this chat GPT, and I can just like I had a much clearer sense of what I wanted, and it was a much simpler idea. Where I, I, I wanted to have the Google Sheet customization, so that it's, it's very easy to update, um, and I wanted to just have the images stored in directories and and all the stuff. Um, so I, I could just like write down bullet points of what I wanted, uh, and then chat GPT gave me the code, and then I I just made it and it only took you know a few hours for the this version and it's much better than previous ones because i'm actually putting the effort into the parts that count because having made the more complicated one i i had a much better sense of like which which what stuff actually matters and what's just like junk that that um maybe it makes the the overall result more sophisticated in some sense but there's also a you know, if you can, if you can, if you can make a thing simple, then that that like you get points for that in and of itself. Uh, so if you if you have a really simple thing, and it doesn't do everything, but it does some stuff quite well, then then like that that's that's more charming than if it was a big complicated thing. Um, so yeah, I like needed to figure out the, the the big the big lesson was that keeping something simple. Uh, can be or something yeah less is more that's that's the lesson but but mm. but coding addition i feel like that's a you know earlier you described your drawing style and you were like oh these cartoon characters and they have simple faces and they have you know uh geometrical shapes and they all have smiles and eyes and then the colors sort of outside of the box and i feel mm -hmm. like um a big part of what I see your style as like outside of the visual aspect of it is just like maybe one like engaging with ideas and um, different things that you're interested in or explaining things or what have you. And then another part seems like just this sort of playfulness with technology where you're like, oh, what can I do with this mm -hmm. or that? And I don't know, it's really charming to see that those combined together, those different elements. Yeah. Yeah. I, I... Uh, I love playing with technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Um, 
Do you have any advice for me? Hmm. Well, I think you're doing great and I think you should keep going. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it seems like you're, yeah, as you said earlier, sort of hard on yourself and have this critical voice and everyone works with that at some points, I think. But from the outside view over here, you're doing great and you're going to keep doing really cool things. And I felt inspired talking to you and learning more about what you're doing. And I felt that from a distance for a while being mutuals on Twitter. And um, to me, it's sort of, I've been thinking about this phrase from Visa, which, you know, you may have heard of, I know you're also mutuals of Visa. And like he says, show up, don't die, don't quit. And mm -hmm. it's like, to me, if, if you're doing stuff like this and you just show up and you keep going and then good things will definitely happen. And it's just a matter of how and when, and life surprises us. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, hey, Bish, you're doing awesome stuff. And maybe right. my advice would be to, well, one, keep going and two, yeah, let yourself see that, that you're doing, you're doing great. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been fun to learn more about you and your art. And uh, <laughs> it's just been so charming to uh, see this face, uh, yeah. to talk with this face for a couple hours. So thank you. Yeah, great. That's, that's, I'm, I'm glad that this, this kind of worked. Because I, I, yeah, I, I, I like, I tried, I've tried doing uh recording conversations using this thing before and, and like one time i tried to i tried to interview someone and switch between two different characters in real time and and also like animate their mouth as they were talking and it was it was it like did not work at all uh -huh. um, so and that that kind of like discouraged me a lot so um mm. yeah it, it, i don't know it's it's that's great that you, you you got value out of this um version 13 big success <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, great. Mm -hmm.